Now after trying various different methods when it comes to GPU lapping, mainly with the RTX 3090 Kimpin, I'm pretty uh, like confident now that which method gives the best outcome. So uh, these are, or this one over here is my last LN2 port mount when I actually went cold. So this is the mount after removing the card last time when I was almost getting the Time Spy Extreme top score in single GPU category. So, uh, so hold on a bit. So if you look carefully, that's pretty neat. There are some excess thermal paste over here, but that mainly comes when you uh, detach the card from the container. So the uh, surface is pretty much perfect, if you ask me. And I even have the card over here. So, uh, so if you look at the top of the top of the GPU, that's pretty much perfect. So this method is actually by uh, Bizo Bizo. Uh, at least he told me, uh, or this is the way he told me to do the whole thing. So uh, he uses a long glass panel, like what I showed you in my previous video about this whole topic. And he uses this specific sandpaper pretty much. So these are sandpapers by some German company called Matador. I've never used these before, but they seem very, very good for like uh, lapping purposes when lapping like electronics and so on. They give a much better outcome than my 3M sandpapers that I've used this far. So I will pretty much replace all of the 3M and similar sandpapers that I can normally get here with those ones. They give very good finish. I really, really like the outcome. Like in, a, I took some pictures along the way, like uh, after some mount and the look is pretty much perfect. I cannot see any issue whatsoever in the actual thermal paste spread uh, after detaching the cooler from the card. But still, the uh, outcome isn't perfect because it's still cracking for some reason. I absolutely no idea. I've tried different thermal pastes and so on. What I think is that the cracking has to be something related with the uh, uh, card bending when very cold because the lapping or the uh, thermal paste cracking it pretty much always happens at idle not under a load. The usual case is you crash and then you get a thermal paste crack instantly afterwards. So a uh, thermal paste doesn't really crack under load. Like if you uh, watch some uh, like extreme overclocking videos with this particular graphics card model or just 39 overall by Biso Biso or even Ralph from Sweden, you can see that they pour down to full pot during the loading screen of the test. Like they want to minimize the risk of thermal paste cracking when they want to run full pot in some bench. So they just reach the maximum temperature of LN2 right when the test starts or right before the test starts. So. Uh, that's definitely an issue. Those are like uh, when people use like uh, uh, a heat source behind the graphics card. The main purpose for that one is to maintain warm enough temperature on the memory chips to maintain the best possible performance. So the memory chips don't want to be too cold, but the heat behind the card can, al can also help with the thermal paste cracking because the hardest part really for a full pot in terms of thermal paste cracking is the very cold idle temperatures when you uh, like uh, sit on the desktop between the actual runs. This far I've used mostly a GPU Inferno, so this has a stainless steel like backplate and so on and just a thermal pad that goes between uh, the uh, uh, card and the PCB. I've tested different thermal pads and I actually had the best result with a quite thin thermal pad but with quite good uh, thermal conductivity rating that was like a one millimeter thick pad from or by phobia i had the best result with that one for some reason i've seen when i watch results by ogs rove they mainly use thermal pads behind between the back plate and the pcb that are usually between like half a centimeter and one centimeter so uh, you could test like different thermal pads like thicknesses and just pads overall. Now, when it comes to like lapping GPU with a water stone, that's a very debated topic because it's a, there's a real risk for things to go wrong. And that's something you need to understand. So uh, the only stone 
I would recommend based on my own experience for now is this one over here. So this is the last stone I used on my first card. It actually gave a very good outcome and so far like cracking wise I've, I've actually had the best result with this but when you use any water stone there's a real risk for things to go wrong. Like you can make some uh, die cracks at the edges of the GPU's die so that's a real risk of per permanent damage. And the evenness is one thing as well. So uh, when you use these water stones, you need to flatten them constantly over and over again to, make, to be absolutely sure that the surface of the water stone is as flat as it can be. There are definitely differences between the actual stones. I had very good outcome with this one actually. I will link this one in the description of this video. So you can, uh, if you are brave enough, you can try this one. But most like safest way of doing this is to obtain a long glass panel just like the bower and like, like what I saw showed you in my previous video. So that's wide enough and long enough like 40 centimeters long and six to seven centimeters wide and just move the card back and forth against the uh, uh, glass panel. When you attach the sandpaper onto the glass, you need to tape down every single side. So not just the uh, lower and the higher part of the sandpaper, you need to tape down the sides as well. Because if you don't tape down the sides, the long edges or the long sides of the sandpaper, they start to uh, lift up and that could cause some unevenness on your uh, GPU. So I would or at least what I did is I taped down all of the four sides of the sandpaper and that's what I would definitely recommend for you to do. The lapping process is definitely awesome but I really I just don't get why it still keeps cracking. It has to be something else as well and not just the thermal paste itself or the lapping process because we don't get this kind of thermal paste cracking like with many CPUs and so on. This almost feels a bit like uh, thermal paste cracking on X299 CPUs and the only case when I got the X299 CPU completely crack free was when I tightened down the CPU container so tight against the CPU that I actually damaged the CPU socket during that process but it worked completely fine. I could bench the CPU like over and over again passes and crashes in various benchmarks and it never cracked but I really had to go extremely tight with pliers on the thumb nuts and that's definitely risky and I damaged the CPU socket along the way and I had to replace the X299 dark because of that. So that's one of the main reasons why I haven't been so successful with thermal paste cracking because I'm too I'm not like crazy enough or too brave enough to go ex to go so extremely tight with the mounting. There are many guys already who have damaged these cards because of the uh, extremely tight mounting to achieve uh, like crack free outcome like uh, I think Splave damaged one card and Bizo Bizo has damaged various cards because of this when he has been uh, trying to find the best way to run these cards like crack free and with good performance. So I still need to see but this this whole thing should be like solved in a much more sophisticated way like see if some form of thermal paste could be created that could just run crack free like completely because the thermal paste cracking doesn't really happen until at some point but with these cards you do need to lap the card itself like when I tried this card for the first time without lapping I had silent cracks somewhere between like minus 120 and minus 140 I could see it on the OLED display on the card so uh, suddenly it was just 164 even under load when I was testing the card and then suddenly jumped to minus 61, minus 55 without a clear like snap sound. So uh, and it all went away when I lapped the GPU for the first time. Then I could start to go as low as like minus, 60, one, minus 165, minus 175 when I, when I ended the crack risk zone once again but I did face cracks every now and then so it's still not like 100% perfect but based on the feedback by many or numerous users you need to lap these GPUs like tank up couldn't go any colder than minus 140 minus 150 before lapping and then after Roman or Debauer lapped his card 
full pot. The same thing like by, well me for example, I have only been able to go to full pot or even near full pot temperatures after lapping. Same situation by Splave and many other users as well. So you do need to lap these cards if you really want to aim for the best possible scores on LN2. But these are the two methods I would recommend, but do not make or do not use like a small glass piece and move it on top of the GPU because there's a risk of, there's a real risk of unevenness. But uh, just be aware if you really want to try these stones that you can make things very, very bad with these things. So just be aware. So that's why the safest way is to use a, a very long glass panel, but sadly they aren't so easy to find in many places. I actually had to make a special order over here in Finland where they uh, CNC cut those long pieces of glass and they were actually very expensive. I think the overall pr price for those two long glass panels were all already like 70 euros. So it's very expensive to create small glass objects like those, but just saying, but that is definitely the safest way of doing things. But yeah, this is pretty much like a short wrap up. Now, uh, I think Rolf's current method of doing these cards is quite sophisticated. So he uses a very long like uh, backplate on these cards with a thick femoral pad. So uh, that could help with the uh, PCB bending when very cold, because I think that's one of the main reasons, reasons that causes the thermal paste to crack. Biso Biso doesn't use uh, GPU Inferno like what I do. He uses like a heat gun that's pointed directly behind the uh, backplate and with very warm temperature. But his biggest target is to maintain a warm temperature on the memory chips. So uh, I will also try like a hairdryer or a heat gun more after this, but uh, a very good like Inferno unit is the best thing possible because you can use those Inferno units quite well. And especially if you have, let's say like two cards installed, you cannot mount a heat gun on the second card. For the, like the second card, you always need like, like some kind of a, G a GPU Inferno unit to run it properly. On the first card, you can use like pointed heat source like a heat gun or a hairdryer. But that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, still want to see if I could get some more scores, but I will link down all of these parts. I recommend you to try. I still want, I still think I, I should try some uh, like different thermal pastes, see how, how they could turn out uh, in this kind of case. But this is a very demanding job for any thermal paste, but definitely try these Matador sandpapers for this whole process. So even for like CPU lapping, I would obtain these Matador sandpapers. Based on Biso Biso's recommendation, I mainly used 1500 grit, but you can obviously go even finer, like 2000 grit or even finer if you want a very nice finish, but I think it doesn't really matter because De Bauer used very rough grit sandpaper or polishing film in his example video and it worked just fine. So uh, I don't really think it matters that much, like uh, how fine you actually make the, uh, the card itself. But uh, I will link down the Matador sandpapers as well as this stone and some of these like thermal pads for you to try if you are interested in. Seems so that many of these thermal pastes do actually work if the uh, GPU finish is very good and if you have a very good mount. Like people have been able to run full pot quite well even with the pink thermal paste as well as with KPX. So it's not really about the thermal paste because I've seen it myself as well. When I got many good runs like around full pot temperature with the pink thermal paste, then I switched the mount. I do another like attempt with completely new mount and it cracks instantly at minus 160. So it's not only about the thermal paste, but that would be the ultimate goal to solve this whole issue. Like create a thermal paste that's very resistant to thermal paste cracking at very, very cold temperatures. So that's something some wise guy should be able to solve to get rid of this whole issue for good. So that the real audience, like if, if there's a larger like audience who would like to try this, this kind of like LN2 overclocking with graphics cards near full pot temperatures, that will never happen in a very large scale unless someone really discovers a proper way of preventing thermal paste cracking. But yeah, so uh, just check out these parts and order them if you 
if you are brave enough to try this. But uh, just saying, so these are my own experiences with GPU lapping and how to get the thermal and how to get these cards as high as possible. So uh, yeah, definitely give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you uh, respect my hard work on trying to run these cards on cold and for good results for like 3D Mark Hall of Fame and for hardware bot. And yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.